fish on, this rod is gonna lay flat, just like that, okay? And hit them one time hard, boom. Hit them right up, bring it right up in your face. Fish on. Hit him. That's a little bigger fish here. Wow. Right? Don't, don't pull him up on the surface. Okay. Try to keep him down. There you go, rod right. tip low. Boy, that's a nice, bright female fish right there. I think this is where I'm supposed to stop fishing for just a minute so I can tell you what today's show is about. Today we're coming home to Alaska where we're going to go after the mighty king salmon in the Kenai River. But if you've never been to Alaska before, let me tell you, there's some cultural aspects and beauty that I just can't explain. You've got to see it for yourself. So come with me. Let's go on home. Third day on the Kenai River fishing for king salmon. Early in the day has been the best so far, Ruben. Oh, oh yeah, he's there. Look at that rod. <laughs> is he taking off on you? <laughs> he doesn't necessarily go where I want him to. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Good job. That's a nice fish. Look at the nice spots on him. So pretty. There he goes. All right. Feels just as good to watch him swim back as it did to catch him. That was a great job, oh, man. man. Thanks so much. <laughs> you know, anywhere you go in America, you'll find cemeteries with grave sites in them that reflect the, the military service of the person buried there. And, and these American flags flying over grave sites in a Russian Orthodox cemetery here in Kenai, Alaska. They remind me that, that I know little of diversity. Now, diversity is really what America is all about, and, and it's just fantastic to me that people who became Americans so late in our history as Alaska did, they jumped on board with all their heart and all their might, and they've fought to preserve our freedom and protect the resources that America has. And, and it is because of these people from all walks of life, from all cultures, these are the people that secured my ability to go fishing in the Kenai River here in Alaska and catch my first king salmon. These are wonderful things that we achieve in the commonality of freedom and the service of something much bigger than all of us. You know, if you come to visit Alaska, you're going to be overcome by the beauty that's immediate and evident uh, around you. Um, your hunting's probably going to be great, your fishing's going to be great, but you really haven't really kind of embraced Alaska unless you take the time to spend uh, a day or two at the minimum trying to learn more about, try to understand uh, the native culture. Uh, cultures is a better term. Uh, many and varied cultures, uh, but they are admirable cultures and uh, they're so much a part of Alaska that your experience, whether it be just taking videos of beautiful mountains or fishing our great rivers or hunting the fabulous game here will be enriched by this additional uh, piece of, of understanding. And you'll know a little bit more about Alaska than you did when you came. We're standing on a bluff over this carnival looking thing going on down here. There's tents everywhere, families, communities scattered across the beach with nets walking in the water. What's going on? Well, welcome to the world famous Kenai River Dip Net Fishery. This is Alaska only, resident only fishery. 
And families come down here, more than 20,000 families from across South Central Alaska come down here to enjoy fishing. Fishing with an empty net. It takes a leap of faith to walk out into the water <laughs> with an empty net, but wonder of all wonders, we have millions of salmon returning home, coming home to this river to spawn, and we're gonna harvest just a few of them to put in our freezers to keep us fed, healthy, and happy during the long winters here. It looks like they're having fun down there. I wanna get a closer look. Why do you dig the hole? Oh, just to keep a fire going? Getting a lot of them? Hey, let me look, let me look. Oh man, look at that. That's gotta be good eating. <laughs> As we walked along the beach on the mouth of the Kenai River, I just couldn't believe the culture that we got to witness firsthand. There were kids digging trenches so they could get out of the wind and build a campfire for overnight. These families had been staying there for days and were, they were gonna be there for another week yet. I felt proud to be involved, you know, to be so close to these cultural traditions that some of these families had observed for generation after generation. This was food procurement, and not only gathering food for the family, having a good time doing it, and observing management practices that are good for the state and good for the resource. Hey, you guys have fun, okay? You know, in my short time here in Alaska, I've seen so many cultures out there having fun together, enjoying the resources, getting outside. And what they're coming home to is fantastic. I don't see much color or creed taking effect out here. All I see are Alaskan residents and, and, and natives sharing in one culture. And that culture seems to be based on the land they occupy. General Hamilton said uh, this week that, that it might be fair to assess a culture or a people by the land they occupy and their stewardship of that land. You know, if, if we believe that, if we believe that our culture is tied to the land we occupy, then all we have is our natural resources. And that's greater than any difference we might perceive day to day. I'm Greg Stubbe. Thanks for watching Coming Home. The things I look forward when I come home is uh, my mom, she's always teaching me to raise me Southern style, you know, respect elders, and dad's always taught me a good worth ethic and be behaving and, and that Southern cooking. I, man, it's uh, coming home, walking through the door after a hard day's work and potatoes and uh, roast and everything. It's just a warm feeling to get inside, you know, that you're safe, raised in a Christian environment and that uh, God's gave you all those things and you'd be proud of it and don't take it for advantage. But when I think about what I love about coming home, I do think, kind of relate my life to being a salmon because the salmon come up the river to you know spawn and die. And so many of us, we grow up in a certain part of the country and how many of us end up back where our childhood roots were in our elderly years. Really, it's true. My husband and I were raised in Seattle. We lived in Alaska for 35 years, but we know when we can't do this hunting and fishing anymore, we'll end up back in Seattle because that's where our roots are, kind of like a spawning salmon. What I love about coming home is stuff like, like this. Um, I spent um, eight years of my life in the military, U.S. Air Force, and we did a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of good stuff over there, a lot of good things for the people over there and for our people. And uh, there's, there's nothing like this coming home to. It's uh, just good old fashioned fishing, uh, nice cool air, and uh, love, coming, love coming back, love to be back home. And when you go to war, and you come back, you miss everything about home, and people take everything for granted. Yeah, um, but <clears throat> just doing this, having freedom to go fishing, clean air, people follow the rules, um, they understand things, common sense, um, but mostly family. Family, God, food, those are all the important things in life. And people take it all for granted. They, they don't understand. But when you lose it, then you do understand. As a child, I remember um, coming home to my mother's good cooking. And uh, we lived on the farm in rural Wisconsin, and she was always cooking and baking. And the smell of uh, clothes that had been hanging outside all day and that fresh smell in the house. And uh, just that, that love, that, that family connection, eating meals together, um, sharing, talking. I was born and raised on a farm, so was milking the cows, bailing the hay, and coming home to dinner, yeah, basically. But, yeah, um, I thought, oh, apple pie. 
Chicken and dumplings and things like that.